I'm John Branch, a sports reporter for the New York Times based in Northern California. And I'm joined here today by Jordan Barrett and Zion Wright, two of the skateboarders for Team USA who will be competing at the Olympics. Hi. Hey, let's start out talking about skateboarding's place at the Olympics. Um, skateboarding, surfing, sport climbing are among those sports that are going to make their debut, debut at the Olympics. You guys are already professionals. You guys have contests to go to. Why is it important for skateboarding to be at the Olympics? Jordan, talk to me about that. Yeah, you know, it's it's super exciting for, you know, skating, surfing, rock climbing, all the new sports to be in the Olympics. Surfing and skating are both like really close to my heart. And I just feel like for other people to see that that aren't surfers and skaters to get out in the world for, you know, at a, bro at a broader audience, I think that's really cool and exciting. Now there's going to be two disciplines there at the uh, at the Olympics, the park and street. You guys are both competing in the park discipline. Zion, I'm going to put you on the spot and have you explain what street is for for the viewers here. So yeah, you got street on one hand, which is like handrails, stairs, your ledges and hips, and then you got the park, which is transition hips, different heights of each walls and all that. So it's more like, right, you got street that kind of looks like more raw and hectic. And then you got park, which like looks more flowy and like, you know, people fl like flying around and all that type of stuff. So Zion, do you think the Olympics will allow you guys to showcase the full range of creativity that involved both on the board, but also your personal style? Um, yes, in a way, you know, you got your two sides of skating, right? Which is, you got your contest side of skating, and then you got like your more core side of skating, which is going out, filming video parts, you know, like being with your homies and just like interacting like that, finding new spots and all this type of stuff. So Jordan, similar question to you then, your thoughts on, on being able to compete in this contest in a very mainstream kind of way, but also keep your individual style and show people who you are and, and, and the diversity of this. How do you do that? That was definitely a concern for me, you know, at the beginning stages of all of this stuff. Um, when I heard that we had to wear uniforms, I was, you know, I was a little skeptical on how that was going to go about. Um, but, you know, the other day we actually all, the whole team got, we all met up in LA and it was the official announcement of Team USA. Um, and the night before that, we got to go and get our outfits and pick out what we want to wear to compete in and hang out in and things like that. And the next day when we showed up and we were all supposed to wear whatever we were going to compete in, I was looking around and everyone had their own individual style. And I thought that was really cool. Then I want to ask you about um, the fact that there aren't a lot of black professional skateboarders. And I wonder how that impacted your, your path to get where you are. And I wonder how that plays out as a skateboarder where I know a lot of times you guys are being chased by security guards and cops, detained. Um, tell me about what it's like to be a, a, a black skateboarder and, and, and maybe the lack of role models, how that impacted you. I mean, yeah, dude. I mean, you know, I'm honored to be able to skateboard, right? And to, you know, be who I am. Cause like me growing up, right? It was like, okay, people playing basketball, people playing football and all this stuff. So I feel like it was very special for me to get in a different avenue and get in a different scene. I'm stoked to be able to kind of like bring that, you know, different diversity to skating. Once I started, um, you know, learning more about skating, seeing magazines, seeing videos, and then seeing, you know, the black pro skaters and all this, that's what really gave me hope and gave me hype to be like, oh, if they're doing it, you know, why can I do it? So... So Jordan, back in 2016, you were the first female to qualify for the big skateboarding contest, the Do Tour Park Am, and you competed alongside the boys and the men. How is the environment for women in skateboarding these days? And is there true gender equality in skateboarding? Yeah, I mean, gosh, I think, you know, back just five years ago, skateboarding has come such a long way, especially on the women's side. Um, you know, to think just a few years ago, really, we couldn't even get a contest. And, you know, now we do. We have pretty much the same amount of contests as men. I think the Olympics have also really helped to make that happen. You know, now there was equal qualifiers, there was equal prize money and things like that with all of the Olympic qualifiers, which was a really big deal. So if there's anything, you know, that we could improve on, I guess would be, I feel like there's maybe been, I don't even know, a very low amount of thrasher covers or like a very low amount of 
magazine covers with girl skaters on them or even you know you flip through a normal skate magazine there's maybe if you're on a good you know month we'll find one or two girl skaters there's still a little more work to be done for sure Zion, I want to ask you about the, the culture of the contests. I was at the Des Moines Dew Tour event that you won to qualify for the Olympics. Um, incredible, incredible uh, energy there, especially around you, and you you were leading the energy, uh, the charge there. Um, tell me what it's like at a contest, for people who think this is cutthroat, to see a skateboard contest where there's a lot of love and a lot of support and a lot of cheering. You guys are banging skateboards to support each other. Tell us what it's like at a skateboard contest in terms of the community there. Um, I mean, yeah, dude, right? Like skating is a very communal thing, you know? It's like, as far as how I look at it, it doesn't matter who you are, what you do. If you skateboard, you know, like you're one of us, you know? So like we share that same type of interaction, you know, seeing how it is, seeing other people do what we're doing, you know, at the same level, but in a different way, in a different style, you know, that's what gets me juiced to push me to go farther and just, you know, just to be hyped and just to have a smile on my face because, you know, like would ever think, you know, the skateboard would bring so much joy and just like, you know, so much peace and happiness to somebody. So it's, um, it's a beautiful thing to be able to kind of share that with all these people, right? A big part of skate contests is the crowd and the energy that the, that the crowd brings. And in Tokyo, unfortunately, we're not going to see any any fans in the stands. I wonder how that changes the competition and, and how that changes your mindset. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think um, it'll be weird. Um, you know, it's it really is a big part, you know, hearing the crowd and seeing them and just the energy behind everyone. And, you know, maybe you don't make a run and you have one run left and like, just that crowd energy makes you want to land it and makes you really want to do it. So to not have that, it will definitely be weird. I mean, it's funny to think there won't be any crowds, but on the TV, you know, there's going to be millions of people and that's kind of scary too. So we're, we're kind of, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. Well, thank you to both of you. Jordan Barrett, Zion Wright. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And we wish you the best of luck in Tokyo.